48 hours, a World Cup champion will be crowned here in Vancouver as the United States tackle the defending champs from Japan in a rematch of the last World Cup final. But here in the host city on Friday, it was FIFA that was holding court as they tackled some of the key issues now impacting the women's game. One of the main topics that was addressed has been one that's been a theme of these games, equality. The choice to play the tournament on artificial turf was example number one heading in and FIFA says they are studying the impact it had on players. But as the tournament played out, it became clear that a different inequality was also on display. The severe disparity in financial and structural support that countries are giving their women's programs. In women's football, certainly we have to add other issues like society, financial resources, the treatment of women and women football in, in any country, which is different. So yes, it's true, there's a huge differences. We also have seen it here in the tournament, the top teams, um, the requirements they have, the investment they do, uh, the number of people they bring to such a tournament has been quite different to some others. And I think FIFA really tries to work with all associations worldwide to make sure that gap doesn't get too big. Earlier this week, the tournament was hit by the decision of World Football Supremo Sepp Blatter to not attend the final match here in Canada, a sign for many of the lack of support for the tournament at the highest levels of FIFA. The brass at Soccer Canada, though, chose to put a positive spin on the situation. I'm happy that uh, from a perspective of um, that the focus is on the two teams that are playing in the final and even the two teams in the third place, but more of the two teams in the final. And as I said, I think whoever wins the Women's World Cup, uh, whether it's me, you, or anybody else handing them their trophy, I'm not sure they're, they're too bothered by it. Also not bothered, apparently, were the fans, as Soccer Canada estimates that a record-setting 1.35 million of them took in the matches, while FIFA called this edition the best they've seen. And the host country now has a new target in its sights. We will have hosted uh, every FIFA uh, major competition, youth, senior, um, men's, women's, except the men's World Cup. So certainly uh, when the bid guidelines come out, it's certainly worthwhile incumbent upon us to take a look and review and, and see that, uh, you know, there is a potential in our country to host a men's World Cup pending what the, the bid guidelines would be. The Women's World Cup may indeed have a ways to go before it can ever match the over-the-top grandeur of the men's equivalent. But what we've seen here in Canada this month, a one-third increase in the number of nations taking part, record-setting attendance, as well as overall improved play all across the board, certainly seems to hint at the fact that this game may just be in the best state it's ever been in. Reporting from the Women's World Cup in Canada, Jonas Gilbard, CCTV.